Hello, I'm John McIntyre. I'm a huge fan of the book series Cradle by Will White, so I was really excited to see the Kickstarter to animate it. I've listened to the book series a bunch of times, and when I do, I'm always trying to piece together uh, scenes for an animated adaptation. In fact, back in 2021, I started writing up uh, outlines of different episodes. Last year, I played around a mid-journey to imagine what it could look like in a comic form, and I even tried drawing a trailer, which ended up looking really, really good. So having spent a bunch of time thinking about it in an animated form, I have five changes I would make to Cradle for its animated debut. Now these changes are to make it better fit in a visual format or to appeal to a wider audience, because I want as many people to love Cradle as I do. I'm going to avoid spoilers uh, for all the books outside of Unsold, just talk vaguely around events outside of Unsold, and uh, they aren't in any particular order, but the most impactful one I left for last. So the first change I would make to Cradle is having badges exist outside of Sacred Valley. The reason for that is advancement plays a huge role in the world of Cradle, uh, and it's really important to communicate that very easily. And in a book, you could introduce two minor characters as two jade guards walk into a room. But for an animated form, you'd have to constantly have characters addressing their rank, like, <gasps> those guards are Jade! And I think that's going to get pretty repetitive. So by having badges at a glance, the audience knows the advancement level of each character. To retain all those great moments where Lyndon has a personal connection with the symbols on the badges, outside of Sacred Valley, characters will have symbols that communicate the, their faction. Kind of like the headbands in Naruto. This creates the opportunity for some good moments like the Akura clan are introduced as that symbol everyone's been wearing up until now, or characters not trusting Linden because they don't recognize the symbol on his badge. Moving on to number two, one of the strengths of Cradle is its cast of characters, but it takes a really long time to get there. And in Unsold, it's a very serious book. Yaren and Linden are very serious characters, and I think that's okay. Not every dramatic moment needs to be undercut by a quip, but uh, it's a long time watching Lyndon get bullied. And to make that more comfortable for a new audience, I think we should balance out some of those serious moments with some moments of levity. And for that reason, I would introduce the Sylvan River Seed Little Blue from the start as a naturally occurring spirit with uh, an interest in Lyndon because he's got pure Madra. Pet companions are a staple in animation. Uh, they get to introduce that levity, they endear you to the main character, and they also give the main character someone to talk to. Unsold has a lot of narrating, or Lyndon thinking to himself, explaining the rules of the world, and having a little blue there gives Lyndon someone to talk to and explain those things for the audience's sake. The first change I would make is to a lot of the events in the first half of Unsold. When I was writing outlines, uh, I was thinking of it as a 12 episode season with 25 minute episodes and it would go all the way to the duel partway through book four. So you don't have a lot of time to spend on each book and we need to cut down some events to uh, get two characters quicker. I think it's really important to get to Serial's visit very quickly because that shows to a newer audience kind of the scope of the world. So what we're going to change here is in the seven year festival, Lyndon's going to duel Waymon Terrace for the opportunity to join the Heaven's Glory Spirit, and he's going to use the Oris Tree Remnant instead of the Hornet Remnant. So in this version of events, Linden finds the Ancestral Fruit, and Wei Monteris shows up with inflated ego because he's been accepted into Heaven's Glory School. He punches the tree, creates the Remnant, and runs away. When Linden returns home, he speaks to the First Elder, who makes him give the fruit up to Wei Monteris because he's made up a lie about Linden stealing the fruit off of him, and it's his word versus Terrace's. Linden also has to go speak to Elder Whisper, who encourages him to go on his own path. Linden's pretty discouraged because he was planning on using the fruit for the Seven Year Festival. Uh, so instead, he steals the scroll from the archive, starts practicing the empty palm with Kelsa, and we don't even do the fight against Waymon Keth, uh, Waymon Terrace's dad. Then in the Seven Year Festival, Serial visits the same as before, and once Linden wins the foundation stage, he challenges Wei Monteris. That night, Linden goes to the Oris Remnant, which is still sealed, and offers it 
revenge against the person that killed it and ate its fruit and puts it away in a container. Maybe it dissolves into purple leaves or something. The fight happens on the next day and Lyndon uses the Revenant to beat Waymon Terrace and embarrass him and show everyone that he's a coward and scared of remnants, which we already established. So it's still within the spirit of Unsold, uh, but we get through events a bit quicker. The fourth change I would make is to Lyndon's appearance. In the book, Lyndon is non-confrontational, he's oftentimes conflict-averse, and he still finds himself in fights. The reason for that is he unintentionally scowls and looks like he's spoiling for a fight. I think that works in a book where the visuals are ambiguous, but once we have to draw it and we can't see into Lyndon's brain, if he looks like he's picking a fight, it's gonna seem like he is picking a fight. So instead what I would do is make him scowling sort of when he's thinking very hard, set himself to a difficult task or fighting. Another route we could go is to turn it into a recurring editing gag. So we would see Lyndon trying to be diplomatic from his perspective, and then it would cut to what he actually said, which would immediately sort of undercut everything we just saw from his intention. The final change I would make is what I think is the most impactful, and that's around the title. So when you think about how a lot of people are going to discover this show, it's you know, a streaming platform, browsing through Netflix, Crunchyroll, YouTube, whatever. And when they do this, they're scrolling through a bunch of shows very quickly. And in less than a second, they're going to decide to scroll past it or investigate further. And they're making this decision based off of two things, the artwork and the title. So it's really important to communicate genre here so that people interested in those genres check out the show. If you think about the TV show Game of Thrones, they do a really good job with their title of communicating medieval political drama. And that might be why they named the TV series after the first book instead of the book series name, A Song of Ice and Fire. Now, I love the title Cradle. I'm a huge fan of the lore behind it, but I'm going to watch the show no matter what. And for a new audience, I don't think that title communicates the genre well of fantasy, martial arts, combat. What I think would be a better title is Unsold. It's a little edgier. It's evocative of a magic system. And even if it doesn't end up as Unsold, I think the title should change to something other than Cradle. Let me know what changes you'd make to Cradle, uh, and as a reminder, the Kickstarter ends February 9th. I have a link in the description, and thank you for watching.